Well, Doug, what a treat it is to be once again sitting with you. We've, uh, we've just had extraordinarily enjoyable and uh, from Cadre's perspective, important discussions over the years going way, way back. Maybe just as a way to kind of get things rolling, uh, tell me, tell us a little bit about what you've been up to for the last few years. Okay, well, thank you. And Marshall, it's, it's a pleasure to be here with you as well. We have gone back quite a while. And uh, I really do appreciate our, our being colleagues together uh -huh. and, our, and our friendship as well. Well, I started with uh, dispute resolution when, uh, as a former employee of the California Department of Education, uh, we had a massive complaint of over 103 allegations, and the director asked me if I would do that investigation. At that point, I hadn't had any mediation training, and I jumped into that project, and, and we did uh, complete that complaint. And I found that I needed further training, so I uh, got that training through a community mediation center. Uh, California has a process of mediation centers through the Dispute Resolution Programs Act hmm. that allows counties to assist their citizens resolve issues or complaints or, or problems that they're having at a very lowest level before they enter the judicial system. So we have this entire system in California that I took advantage of to be trained as a mediator, and I brought that knowledge back to the department, and, and you and I helped, uh, you helped me uh, design the first institute on ADR at the department some time ago, and we had some pilot programs and made a lot of progress in that area. Yeah, you know, thinking about that, I remember uh, the partnering process yes, that you had, yeah. which I absolutely loved. It was, you know, a brilliant way to get buy-off. Say, say a little bit about how that worked. Well, that partnering process was uh, one that I, I looked at through the Ar uh, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. The construction industry at the time had a partnering process. Uh, it's the beginnings of collaboration on a project. And when I say collaboration, it simply means let's work together on something. Mm -hmm. So uh, the partnering was that you brought people together, uh, you came to some common agreements about how you wanted to see things done. I think in the world of ADR, we might call them procedural agreements. Mm -hmm. uh, how we're going to talk about the what. What are some of the outcomes going to be? What are some of the things that we feel are important as a group? I think it came almost as just a standard way of doing good business together, working together and setting the rules prior to jumping into the topic. Yeah. And I think uh, managing expectations and all of the things that are associated with that are part of the partnering process. Yeah, you know, I remember uh, uh, and, and my memory is not to be trusted, but that, <laughs> that there was actually a charter that was created that everyone signed off on we that did. essentially authorized the work. Which we was, did do that. Um, and it was, uh, we, we completed the process of all those things I just mentioned. We listed what was important, how we were going to realize those things, and then everybody in the, in the group signed uh, their names around the charter, the, the promise. Yeah. And it was a way to uh, institutionalize that thought. And some groups had them blown up to poster size and was in the director's office. Uh, one of the things is to make it public mm -hmm. is one of the outcomes of that is to publicize it. Yeah, so it was, it was, that was really fun. I enjoyed doing yeah, that Yeah, that was you. a good project. So now, f for years, you've been helping people to collaborate in a variety of different contexts. As you kind of think mm -hmm. about that work, are there you know, thoughts that you believe have been particularly powerful that have really supported you helping folks to work well together? Yeah. Uh, well, these are things I've observed in myself uh, and in others. <laughs> as they evolved along this, this road of collaboration. So the first thing uh, that comes to my mind, it's not about me, it's not about you, but it's about us. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of a foundational statement. And that took, uh, that took me a while to mature, <laughs> should I say, into that, that level of thinking. And I've seen others mature the same way, into the, the whole is more important than the individual segments. Mm -hmm. And the other thing about collaboration that I've found is I've never seen an outcome that uh, was better than a collaborative one than a single one. The collaborative outcome is always richer, mm -hmm. it's stronger, 
it involves different perspectives and viewpoints than if a singular entity had been working on that same issue. We in the, uh, the world of education, it's a very complex situation. We have a lot of different parties. We oftentimes can't or don't understand their point of views because we, we're not experiencing that. So when we collaborate, we work together. And if it was only as simple as that, yeah. <laughs> we all know that collaboration is, uh, is a necessary uh, process to engage in to get that good outcome. And it can also be a very difficult one. So we need the tools, we need the opportunities to bring people together. And as a system designer, I think that's critical that we should offer up the public these opportunities to join together to collaborate and to, and to work on issues that are important to all of us. And imagining that you have a group of people uh, that you've brought together, are there, um, are there uh, things that you would do before the meeting or during the meeting that you think would contribute to sort of maximizing the collaborative opportunity? Yeah, I think you're right about that. There are things, I mentioned the word procedural agreements, uh -huh. of, of just what is it the purpose of why we're going to be here. Uh, oftentimes, to figure out the, the why we're here and how we're going to do it, ask those questions and set up those processes even before we begin to delve into mm -hmm. the issue whichever that might be, and the issue may have changed as a result of that. But these are some things that uh, lead towards a, a good collaborative process is, is setting up good procedural agreements, the, the how we're going to talk about the what, who owns the process, what's that going to be like. Yeah. So, so, Doug, for years you've been thinking about special education dispute resolution systems. Mm -hmm. You've overseen a number of, of Prior to leaving uh, the department to retire, you oversaw a number of innovative projects. Um, as you think about systems, are there um, dispute resolution systems, especially in special ed, are there gleanings or takeaways about systems that? The ways that I think about that is, is what fits for the community. And we can offer up uh, structures, uh, processes, global pictures but I believe that uh, what's most important is for the people that are in the community to design their own system and to determine which of all these opportunities they're able and capable to take advantage of mm -hmm. and to make use of what fits, what's going to be the best for us, and to begin to uh, take that opportunity and operationalize it. So one of the key takeaways of systems design that I've found is to give the authority uh, the ability and the opportunity for the participants to design their own system. But we can be a part of that opportunity by offering them that solution. Uh, in my previous position, uh, I was able to do an ADR design of a grant process. And one of the things that we identified was uh, there are family empowerment centers in California whose statutory charge is to uh, develop alternative dispute resolution systems for those engaged in the IEP process as a problem-solving way. There are SELPAs and school districts whose charge is to be compliant with all federal mm. and state statutes. There are local mediation centers whose job is to bring citizens together to be able to resolve situations at a local level. And at times, they're all maybe aware of each other, but they haven't been given the opportunity to develop a project together. So the way I was able, or the State Department was able to, during that grant process, is to encourage uh, all of those parties' participation in the mm -hmm. development of a system. Now, the grantee has the opportunity to maximize that, to become acquainted with it, and put it on a continuum of how much they're going to use a local mediation center, how much they're going to involve the Family uh, Empowerment Center, but we've given them the opportunity to come together and to experience each other's strengths, what they bring to the table, and to see if it works in their community. So we're waiting for the, uh, well, the results of that will be forthcoming. Uh -huh. We'll see how that turns out. That's really nice. You know, one of the things that we're increasingly focused on uh, in cadre, actually have been for a while, is 
um, is stakeholder engagement. Yes. And as we talked uh, uh, to people around the country, there are folks who've really invited some of the uh, the folks who they would characterize as being the most difficult, the most oppositional, the um, the biggest problems. They've invited them to the table and begun to sit down and engage in problem-solving processes. Mm -hmm. And without exception, people say that while it could be a little bit sort of bumpy at the beginning, that inviting those people to sit down and work together um, was one of the very best things that they did. And that really kind of harkens back to that early I, partnering work. I agree you with were, you. Yeah, I think um, that's true. And there may be bumpy roads and uh, toes may be stubbed along that road, but uh, it's my belief that it's uh, worthwhile yeah. uh, to involve early and often. And uh, that can be done at a variety of levels, not only in dispute resolution with specific situations, uh, but even in the development of a regulation process. Mm -hmm. The regulations uh, implement statute. And uh, there are opportunities for all to weigh in on existing regulations uh, prior to the rulemaking process. So mm -hmm. you can involve multiple parties that way. So in all levels of, uh, in government and uh, in special education, which my experience has been the most regulated and statutorily driven form of education, I've been involved in many types of uh, education programs in general ed. And, uh, Special ed remains to me probably the most regulated. Yeah. So it involves a variety of parties to, to weigh in on that. And we can, it, it, the, the outcomes are increased, better outcomes when we weigh in. You know, thinking about special education dispute resolution, Doug, I know that you have mentored and advised a lot of people early in their career, um, and late in their career for that mm -hmm. matter. You know, it, do you have advice for sort of someone who's just entering the field of special education dispute resolution? Uh, I think that uh, all school districts and organizations have their own culture. It's important to understand uh, what works in your community and how mm. the culture realizes its goals. Uh, so for someone just beginning to become familiar with their, their local culture, their local community, and then possibly to be trained by another entity outside that culture. Uh, and my experience was with being trained from a local mediation center where I gained insight into how another uh, institution resolves situations, to bring that back into the school district's culture and to vice versa share some uh, of those opportunities of how things are done. One of those ways uh, that's occurring now is the Sacramento Mediation Center is involved with a local school district to provide some mediation training for compliance complaints. Yeah. So not only were those uh, local community mediators trained, given a special training in uh, special education, uh, what the basis of IEPs are to be, have the mediators familiar with the language, which is mm. important, but also uh, some of the administrators from the local school district took a two and a half day mediation training from the mediation center. So they, they cross-trained each other, in other words. They are able to share their different ways of doing things in the same actual physical community, but different approaches. So to me, that was what uh, one of the strengths of of that grant provided them that opportunity where they may not have known of been they they may not have known of each other even though they are in the same community so it was a great opportunity to cross train and that makes terrific sense i think that sometimes uh, folks will get wed to a specific approach uh, exactly and yeah. that, you know the more uh, uh, tricks you have in your bag yep. that you're able to really sort of customize the opportunity mm -hmm. that you're providing in a way that um, produces the greatest likelihood of a positive outcome. And so I really, um, and I love the stuff about context. Yeah. You know, sitting here talking to you, I remember, and I hadn't just sort of popped into my mind early thinking you were doing about return on investment. And, <laughs> yeah. uh, I don't know if you remember any of that, but even just a comment, it was, uh, you know, I think that some of your thinking about that, we went to a time and time again, people would say, do you have anything on return on investment? We'd go, well, Doug McDougall wrote a, a, yeah. a piece about that. Do you remember that work? I, I do recall that. That, uh, it was the cost benefit analysis uh -huh. and the return on the investment. and. It's, a, it's an evasive, it, it's kind of an elusive uh, thing to grab onto that, what did you prevent by this? Hmm. And it's hard to say, well, the, the next Supreme Court case was prevented, 
by this intervention. But we do know and we can measure things on a return on investment like uh, levels of satisfaction of the users. Would they use the process again? Uh, is there value to this? Uh, those are all useful returns. And then there is the explicit data of uh, the number of compliance complaints that were filed. Uh, is there a trend towards uh, reduction and how do we identify, if at all we can identify, uh, what led to those reductions or in some cases increases? Yeah. I was sitting next to a person this morning who had uh, 57 due process filings in their uh, area and uh, all were mediated successfully. Wow. So quite an accomplishment. I think that issues remain, uh, but yet the way to resolve them has increased. Right. And I'll use that, op that word opportunity again. They had an explicit ADR process in place and they are able to, <coughs> excuse me, they are able to uh, address that via those. So I would call that a, a, a substantive return on investment. Yeah. Financial returns, we know the cost of a due process hearing for both parties, parents, attorneys, school districts, uh, the psychic price is high. Uh, no one seems to be satisfied at the end. Yeah. Uh, all of those things I think we can look at on a return on investment. Great. So uh, I wouldn't, I'd feel remiss with an opportunity like this and this, just to say, I mean, is there anything else that, you know, kind of in closing that you would share, you know, <laughs> sort of a, a parting thought? Well, uh, the parting thought for me would be to uh, provide opportunities at the earliest possible level to resolve situations. Mm -hmm. And then there's not only resolution of an identified problem or situation, but the whole, the whole notion of avoidance in the first place is to be compliant with all statutes and regulations, mm -hmm. is to uh, have, have and build strong relationships with your community your parents, the, co the consumers of a service, and to uh, be able to provide those in a, in a viable and meaningful way uh -huh. is avoidance. It's, it's doing what uh, we all strive to do. And I think at the same time realizing that there are uh, uh, differences of opinion that should be there and that there are processes in place. And even involving the due process hearing, which is an important part of our uh, our whole system of uh, resolving differences. They should remain, but there should be many, many more opportunities prior to that. Yeah. So I would encourage uh, everyone to, uh, to make use of all of those opportunities. Yeah, thank you very much, Doug. It's just, it's always a real pleasure talking to you, and I really appreciate all of the wisdom that you've shared with Cadre over the years. So. Well, it's, it's certainly been reciprocal. Wow. So I've enjoyed the same relationship and had a tremendous benefit from always knowing you. Great, thank you very much. Well, thank you.